Good morning, Disciple Church. This is Mary Ellen Barrow welcoming you to this time of worship. What a beautiful week we have had after that terrible winter weather. So glad we're seeing some hints of spring that are coming. Well, today is the 28th day of February, and it's the second Sunday in the season of Lent. So as we continue in this time of reflection, spiritual assessment, growth, transformation, we will be looking at the theme of darkest before the dawn. And particularly, we give thanks that Dr. Bill Longsworth will be leading us in a reflection as we consider some about suffering, something that we know a little bit about after this last year, and about part of the human condition that is unavoidable. So I'm glad you're here with us. This will be a day of peace, uplifting, encouragement, and I'm so hopeful that you'll find what feeds your spirit and fills your soul today. Thank you for being here. Please register your attendance. Please continue to be faithful in your giving. And please keep yourself ready to join with us as soon as it's safe to gather again together in our beautiful chapel with those gorgeous stained glass windows. I miss that place and I miss seeing all of you and your hugs. I hope you're well. I hope you're practicing resilience and taking care of yourself and your loved ones. Been a tough time, but we are here and we are not overwhelmed by loss. We continue to press on in faith. So thank you for joining us today. Welcome. As we come to this time in our service for communion, I remind you that even during the season of Lent, Sunday is a brief break from the process of Lent, the, the 40 days of, of fasting or struggle or transformation, whatever spiritual discipline you chose to practice this season. So today we celebrate the true value of God's promise never to leave or forsake us. That matters now more than ever in times when we are hurting, when so many have suffered countless loss. So we join you today as we break from that journey to come to this table of blessing, the table of welcome, where all will be fed. The God of love is with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks. The very nature of God is love. In love, all things were created in heaven and earth. You were created in love, bearing the image of God. The holy lives in you. God of the sun and stars, we praise you. With all creatures on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending hymn. Oh. God of power and time. 
We give you thanks for Jesus, the revelation of God's love, who shows us how to live and how to endure even the greatest suffering and humiliation. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving, we may live in a way that shows God's love in all that we do and say, and that gives us hope and strength in times of great suffering. By your grace, may our lives proclaim the mystery of faith. Jesus has died. Jesus has died. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Christ lives with us today. Christ lives with us today. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup, that through Christ's presence, we may become a beacon of light, a source of joy, a witness for peace. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with seekers far and near, one in ministry to all the world until we feast at his heavenly banquet when there are no more tears and no more suffering. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. I see it from the mountains if I were as tall as they. Morning, morning, well does Oh, 
with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Good morning. I would like to share some thoughts with you during this time of Lent about the question of why is there so much suffering? Broken water pipes, no water freezing temperature outside and sometimes inside people's houses, death from fatal car accidents, food deprivation, de de deprivation for many people in our own country, jobs lost, around the world drought and famine, flooding and wildfires, people <clears throat> abusing children, people abusing one another, cruelty of all kinds and all forms all over the world. In the world there is suffering far beyond our most vast imagination and if we understood it, it would destroy us. So we have the age-old question, why? Why is there so much? Well, first of all, we are flesh and blood. We bleed, we break, and we die. Secondly, some of the suffering that we experience is some that we bring on ourselves. Drunk driving or excessive speed, ignoring the threats to our health that we know reasonably could lead to our death, ignoring what we contribute to foul air and water and threats to plant and animal life in this environment in which we all live. Some suffering comes because of our own actions or inaction. Some suffering is the result of what others do or don't do. Someone driving drunk or drugged will run a stop sign or go the wrong way on a freeway or even go the wrong way on a freeway in the middle of the night with no lights on. Head-on collisions and people are dead. The is also some of the things that happen because someone is so calloused and self-centered that they don't even feel the harm that they are giving to someone else. And there are shooters who kill one another and there is drug and alcohol use which unleash, unleashes the beast in us and we destroy others. There is the fact of someone in power using violence to sustain their having been in power and in, the, in doing so destroy others. Some suffering is the result of the actions of others. Some suffering is random. Cells are incompatible and sometimes lead to cancer. There are tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanoes, all of these which are natural and would happen anyway, though by our actions we can make their effects worse. So, some suffering is the result of being human 
flesh and blood. Some is the result of actions of our own. Some is the result of actions of others. And some is random. For example, the person who is hit by a driver coming through an uh, intersection, the person who is hit by that person could have been just the wrong person at the wrong place at the wrong time, random. So we have a sense of why it is we suffer. And then the second question is always, why is a God of love, why does a God of love allow these things to happen? When I was in seminary, I had the good fortune of having a course on the Doctrine of God in which I was able to understand in a way that made sense that God is not all-powerful, that God's power is limited. Later, I read this in Rabbi Kushner's book, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. And the same conclusion of his was that God is not all-powerful, that the chemistry and the physics that brought this universe into being in the first place now exist in terms of its evolution and progression, and God cannot intervene in those just for a special occasion. We cannot also deny the element of human freedom. God is, and God's power and influence are like that of a loving parent. As parents, we seek the best for our children. We try to educate them in ways that we can, but we are not fully in control of the choices they make or the things that they do. And so God wills our good but we can make decisions for good or for ill. The ancient rabbis spoke of the good and evil yet, sir, the good and the evil sides of ourselves. And we can allow the destructive side of ourselves to cause all kinds of harm and evil. But we can also use the good side of ourselves to try to relieve suffering. And if we are unable to do so, then at least there are ways in which we can be with people who suffer and seek to bear the burden with them. And though it might not be of any kind of help to someone who is in the midst of suffering, God is affected by and absorbs into his own life all of the suffering in the world and God is not destroyed. God continues to will the good for each and for all. William Sloan Coffin, who was the chaplain at Yale University and subsequently the senior pastor at Riverside Church next to Union Theological Seminary, while he was senior pastor at Riverside Church, his 23-year-old son, Alex, was killed in a car accident. Afterwards, uh, he had gone to his sister's home in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and was sitting in the living room with some of his friends, seeking to console him. And a lady walked through the front door with a plate of quiche and paused by the entrance to the living room and shook her head and said, I really don't understand God's will. Coffin got up and followed her to the kitchen. He said he thought his anger would do him good. And as he followed <clears throat> her to the kitchen, he said, Ma'am, you surely do not understand God's will. Was it God's will that Alex should have one frosty too much before he left the party? Was it God's will that the snowstorm 
that was taking place in Boston had covered the roads which had not yet been plowed and at that exact section of Boston Harbor there was neither a guardrail nor a streetlight. And was it God's will that Alex had not replaced the faulty windshield wiper on the driver's side of the car? No, he said, none of those were God's will. When Alex's car slipped beneath the icy waters of the Boston Harbor, God's was the first heart to break. dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one. We share in the unity of love as we partake. This is the bread of life. Jesus is the revelation of God's love and this is the cup of blessing. Let us partake in the cup of blessing, a new covenant sealed with God's love. As we share in this cup, we understand that by God's unfailing grace, we are one in the bond of love. And now join me in the prayer that we were taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from all that is evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. As we come to our time of closing, I want to thank you for being with us today. This is certainly a joy in my life. 
and it is so wonderful to share this time with you. Hear this quote from an unlikely source. Love isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun like struggle. To love someone is to accept that person exactly the way he or she is right here, right now. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood made that quote. I think he was onto something really good. It's all about community, about connection, about learning to love that isn't sentimentality. It doesn't fall away when hard times come. It persists even in suffering. That's kind of like faith. I hope that as you go through this time, this season of Lent, you can have a new way of looking at your life, at your blessings, at your struggles. And I hope that you come away from that soul-searching moment trusting that God's grace is sufficient. I want to thank Bill Longsworth for his message, Ed Landwehr for his production, Hans Grimm for his amazing music. I'm so blessed to be part of this team. Thank you, and thanks for being with us today. I hope that this is a beautiful week in your life as we move on towards spring through this season of Lent. God be with you, now and always. The God of peace is with us. Let us go in peace. The God of love is with us. Let us go in love. Amen. See you next week.